You're welcome to the Church of the Sacred Heart, the Church of the Defence Forces here at Arbor Hill. Amira and Martin Jr. are going to give a little presentation for us on Martin's life. And they will also present some symbols which capture elements of his life that are familiar to, to most of us, but which we bring very much in prayer here today. Good morning all. My name is Amir, myself and my two brothers, Joey and Martin, as well as, well as the rest of his family, friends, and <coughs> to say goodbye to our dad. It's been a difficult week for all, us all in the family. As, as we are here standing before you to attempt to say some words describing our dad and the man he was is heartbreaking. Our dad was a husband, a father, and grandfather, brother, uncle, friend, teacher, and a comrade. He was a man who was part of each of our lives in so many ways. Our dad loved being around people, having the crack. He was a people person. Over the past few days, Over the past few days, the phrase that keeps coming up describing Dad is a gentle giant. He was always there to help people whenever needed and welcomed everybody into the house, no matter who it was. Some came back if they weren't scared off by his army st stories, but some have never been seen since. Our dad was a family man who loved sitting in his seat on the sofa, being surrounded by his family and by his family, including the dogs and the cat. He especially had a special place in his heart for his youngest grandchild, Renoch. When I told him I was pregnant, my mum had to sit him down to tell him. It was a shock to him, but straight away he was supportive and organising things for Renoch's arrival, even before I could. I, always told, I was always told I had <coughs> dad wrapped around my little finger but when Renock brought it to the new level. If you looked for Dad or Renock over the last few months, you'd surely find Renock curled up in Dad's arm on the couch. Dad spent 25 years in the army where he made friends for life. You could never go anywhere without meeting someone you would know from his army days. He would always tell us stories from his time in the army and could tell you of days about his adventure. He would was he was always proud very proud of his time in the army and the skills he learned. They stayed with him for the rest of his life. Reading comments on Facebook from his fellow former comrades were well loved and respected. But by all of them. He was described the best of the best, a proper gentleman, never had a bad word to say about anybody and how privileged they were to serve with him home and abroad. Dad never stood still long. When he retired from the army, he moved over to being a tutor and a teacher to many people. He loved working with LME TV and how it allowed him to meet new people, share stories and teach people new skills. He always traded notes and ideas with his colleagues. He'd go into work, catch up with his colleagues before the day and class started. He loved this time to catch up with them. Dad was a people person. He loved meeting new people to share stories with. He always ready to welcome anybody into the house for a cup of tea, for a cup of coffee or something a little bit stronger from time to time. Sometimes it was her being the only daughter growing up, bringing a new boyfriend back to meet Dad. Dad's stories could scare the less brave ones. If you met Dad and got time to chat, chatting with him, he, it would, you were one of the lucky ones. He had a great life full of experience, and if you got him chatting about it, you would hear 
some interesting stories. <laughs> he loved activities like scuba diving. He made sure that he passed the love into Junior and myself. And I promised you, Dad, I will get Renock into water as you loved it as much. As much as Dad loved his family and people around him, he loved the animals as loved the animals. What's that? Especially his dogs. I think Dad was their favourite person. It was not such so much that Dad had pets. I think Belle and Grady had a yearman. At six o'clock every evening the dogs pretty much picked up their bowl and banged them for food. Mum will have to remember to feed them on their schedule that Dad had them so used to. I'm going to miss you every single day, Dad, and I'm going to do my best to make you proud. I'll make sure that Renock knows all about her big friendly giant of a granddad. I'm so lucky to have you as my dad. You'll be in my heart and thoughts every day I love you. This is Joey's bit now. A few things I could say about Dad. He is a gen he's a big, gentle giant who cared and loved his family, friends, work colleagues, and others alike. He was so he was a re relatable relatable man to have to get to know. My fond memory was of him was when. I was a young kid and he, when he was working in the army in Monaghan ba military barracks on the weekends when he was off, he would come down to Dublin, bring myself, Martin Jr. up to Monaghan on the weekends. He would try his best in looking after us and would buy us nice things if he had the money. When we were out playing with the friends make, we made up there, he would say, which girl were you chasing? Another girl memory is the time I got married. I was in the church at the altar waiting for the bride to be. My dad noticed my tie wasn't on right. So he called me over to tell me so he could fix the tie right. He said, you're never too old for me to look after you. Another memory is when I was in the hospital after fracturing my right ankle. He would come and pay me a visit with Colette and Amira after his work day to see how I was getting on. He helped me hop over to the shower so I could wash and freshen up. When I came out the shower room, I had a little sip and Dad and Colette and the hospital staff helped me back to the hospital bed. The last memory of my dad was the last time I saw him alive. I <coughs> planned to visit to see him, Colette, Amir and Renock while Nash was down visiting family. He said to me, text me when you hit Navin when I, and I'll come pick you up. When I got to Navin, I texted my dad, so he came to pick me up from the bus stop. He, te he texted back saying he's on his way. When I got into the car, he said, he said he was in the middle of breakfast when I texted him. We drove back to the house. He decided to ring Amira to see where she was. A few minutes later, Amira came into the house with Renock. I handed two eggs, one for Renock and the other one for Amira, for her. Amira said, I thought you were getting me a Peppa Pig, pig one. I said no, I was kidding. I just wanted to see what she said. My dad was stunned and impressed with the nice egg which I got in here. Then I handed a few things of Lego which she had to build with dad for Renock. We had, a, we had chats as Renock was getting fed by dad. After when Renock was fed, she settled and I got to hold her while dad played with her. When the time come, came to come back home, go back home. Amira called out, Joey's going now. My dad saw me coming out of the sitting room. My dad said, give me a second, I'll drop you down to the town. I said, no, I want to walk down and as I want to get air in me. You stay here 
on watch your health and the true ladies. I'll text you when I'm home safe. When I was le when I'm leave when I was leaving, I gave Colette a big hug after when he said right so I know I knew what my dad was like. As soon as I closed the front door, that was the last time I saw my dad alive. I wish I had the chance to say goodbye to him. I miss him so much. He's, I know he's watching down on us. We love you, Dad. You're in heaven now with Granddad home and Nana home and Nicola and the rest of the lov lovely, loving people that we all have lost. Rest, may you rest in peace. Martin's a bit. Um, my fond memory of my dad, especially today, is when Dad first met my wife Anne Marie in the in the in a pub in Dublin, and said that you were going to be my daughter-in-law someday. After just meeting her for the first time, who would have thought that we had it would come true at that time? I have so many happy memories being a being a kid in Man and chasing the girls and to die, drive around the coast and even be out clubbing. There, this, there are memories that will stay with me. Bye, old boy. And this is a little poem that I found describing that. You never said, you never said you're leaving. You never said goodbye. You were gone before we knew it, and only God knows why. A million times I needed you, a million times I cried. If love alone could have saved you, you would never have died. In life, I loved you dearly. In death, I, I love you still. In our hearts, I hold a place that only you can fill. It breaks my heart to lose you, but, but you didn't go alone part of me. Went to achieve the day God took you home. Now I want to bring up some symbols that represent my dad's life. These will be brought up by Rena, I have by Aunt Fiona, Dara, my son, Esther, our neighbour, and Anna. Teach to our younger 
family and friends. Richard will place the cross on the coffin as a reminder of that sign which represents God's love and goodness. The sign of the cross which we hand on to the next generation. The sign of the cross that I made yesterday on the other day on Martin's forehead as we claimed him as a friend of the Lord Jesus. And we place the word of God which is opened for us during this Holy Mass and we'll hear the text from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. May Christ greet Martin with these words of eternal life, come blessed of my God. we sign ourselves now with the cross of Jesus in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us open our hearts to the mercy and love of God, the mercy and love of God to which we now entrust our brother Martin. You were said to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Natasha will proclaim the word of God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the tent we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made for human, of human hands, but in the heavens. We are always full of confidence then when we remember that to live in the body means to be exiled from the Lord, going as we do by faith and not by sight. Whether we are living in the body or exiled from it, we are intent on pleasing him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words to foreign men, and they will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go. your 
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary stayed outside near the tomb weeping. Then, still weeping, she stooped to look inside and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken my Lord away, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. As she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not recognize him. Jesus said, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and remove him. Jesus said, Mary. She knew him then and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means master. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go and find the brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary of Magdala went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Be seated, please. In the reading that Natasha proclaimed for us, we heard the image that St. Paul uses of our earthly existence. He speaks of us living in a tent, a tent which one day will be folded up and which will be replaced by a house built by God. Not just a house built by God, but a home, a home in the heavens. And on this Friday of Easter week, a week which has, has been so disconcerting for all of Martin's family, we want to surround them with our love and our care. We want to assure them of our prayers and of our support, those of us who are here in the church and those who through technology are able to join us through the live stream. Colette, these last, this last week, you have been carried by the prayers and the support of so many good people, even from the first phone call that Mick was there and Mick recognised the home of a fellow soldier. Mick, thank you for being here today. Those who in the last few days have connected in from Martin's work, a work that he loved in the Defence Forces, and his 
work after those years of enjoyment and of goodness. That he was able to put his skills to use with the LMETB. Skills which St. Paul learnt as the tent maker allowed him to move from one place to another, knowing that his skills were needed. And it's the same with Martin, our friend. Skills that he learned among some of the first to learn these skills in the Defence Forces, as things called computers came into orderly rooms. And he ran with this opportunity to make sure that things ran smoothly. Proving to every soldier, to every person in his care, every person for whom he had a responsibility to make sure that things were done and things were done properly for them and by them. Treating them as he would treat his own family. He proved that the soldier is more than a number. It's not just their number that they're given on their first day and that they keep until their last day in uniform. That that number represents a family, represents hopes for the future, represents challenges and concerns at home and overseas. The enthusiasm which young soldiers and recruits need, the optimism and the hope that they appreciate when they're getting their, their pay, when they're getting the kindness and the attention of making sure that things are done correctly for them. That goodness is something which multiplied in the Defence Forces thanks to Martin's work. We thank God for his adaptability for his service at home and overseas, for the contentment and the joy that he brought to units at home and overseas. And he knew the challenges that go with going overseas too. And that admin, that care that is so necessary for soldiers, including those who are coming home today from the Golan that things are written up well, that documentation is kept. All of this he was able then to transfer from one task in the Defence Forces in uniform into a completely different sphere, but where people are valued and helped to find the best opportunities for them in life. The work of the LMETB Louth Mead Education Training Board. That work is summed up in the mug, in all the make it happen, the can do moments of people saying, Martin, have you got a minute? And how that minute meant that hours later, Colette might be still wondering, where did that minute go to? You know that as family, because you were able to benefit from those minutes, those moments. And last night, bringing Martin home for the last time, spending that last night in Balrisk, spending that time in your home, cherishing memories. Those memories Amira has mentioned. But I'd ask you, dear friends, those of you joining us who've travelled to be here today from the 29th Battalion, 27th Battalion, the 5th Battalion. This church was the church of the 5th Battalion when they were based here in Collins Barracks. How appropriate that Martin comes here and is brought here for his funeral mass, where state ceremonies are held each year. To remember those whose vision ensured the goodness, the productivity of our state as it developed and grew and took its place among the nations. We need people of generous service. You've, some of you have heard me saying this before. 
in a culture which, due to the pandemic, has caused greater isolationism. We need people who work to help us get the best out of each other. You know that as Martin's family. He took delight in helping you, in helping you as grandchildren too, in knowing your names, in seeing you on these key moments in life. And now you see him being carried here, placed before the altar. Can I draw your attention to the sentry which is standing near Martin's coffin? I'm talking of the Paschal Candle. The Paschal Candle is wounded. It's bright. It's, the, it's proclaiming the light of Jesus. But it's also wounded by the five nails in the shape of the cross in the center of the candle, showing the wounds of Jesus. And we can honestly say that we are wounded because of the suddenness of Martin's death. We remember too vividly, we remember too vividly the phone call that we got and how we heard the news. That somebody who was more than a number, more than a name, that he had died. During this Easter week, so, we turn to the Lord Jesus, just as St. Paul turned and placed his confidence in the Lord Jesus, knowing that there was not just a house built by God, but an everlasting home made for us in the heavens. We pray God's comforting for Anthony, Paul, Andrew, Nigel, Anna, Sandra and Lorraine. I thank God for those who've helped out in so many important ways, who've helped Colette, Amira, Joey and Martin and Anne. I think especially of Jeanette who ran the house like an orderly room in the last, in the last week and who made sure that everybody who came here today would be able to bring home a visible reminder of Martin, who made sure that things would be done correctly and well. As we entrust Martin to the embrace of God, we share in the confusion that Mary Magdalene experiences on that first Easter. She doesn't recognize the Lord Jesus. The grief and sadness that she feels has taken over her. So dear friends, please continue to pray for each other, to pray for all of Martin's family, both those in his house, in his home, those in his workplaces, and those who are his extended family, whom he included and assured that they were much more than a number. May the Lord welcome them and all of us one day into the peace and eternity when the tent that we live in on this earth has been folded up. May we find a place in that house, in that home, not made by human hands. In Anna Menachar, August and Vic, August and Spirit Nave. Amen. Our prayers of the faithful will be led now by Roshin, Ashling, Tanya, Karen, Jay and Paul. Would you please stand?
We thank God for the kindness and care which Martin brought to our family. Lord, we ask you to comfort them in their sorrow. Fill the emptiness in their hearts with the presence of your everlasting love. Bless them and wipe away every tear. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for our neighbours, friends of the Defence Forces, friends who had shared life's journey with Martin and who also share our loss and shock. Lord, hear us. Lord, God our, Father, God our Father, we pray for the deceased members of the home and family. We remember especially Martin's deceased parents, John and Mayo, and his niece Nicola. May they rest in God's peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for this community assembled here to pray for Martin. Through this holy mass, may God deepen our faith and strengthen our hope in eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all families who are suffering the pain of loss at this time, in our parish, in the Holy Land, in Ukraine, and in many troubled parts of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, <coughs> we pray for the first responders, paramedics, fire brigade, guardi, and neighbours who helped look after Martin and his family last Friday night. May God, God reward them for all their support and kindness they have shown. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. On your right hand side you can see this beautiful banner, Our Lady, Patroness of the Defence Forces. We entrust all of these prayers that we've spoken. And we entrust those who are travelling home today from the Golan. And those preparing to go to Lebanon in the coming, the coming weeks. We entrust all our Defence Forces to the protection of Mary, our Patroness, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Would you be seated, please? And Sandy and Andy will bring forward the gifts of bread and wine now. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time of Easter, to acclaim you above all. Through Christ, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Like the apostles, like Mary Magdalene, we now kneel as we prepare to welcome the risen Jesus present among us. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He is so As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Dermot, our Bishop, and all the clergy. <coughs> Remember your servant Martin, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Martin, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand together as we pray the best prayer we know. We prayed it that Renuk would be able to learn it from all her family. And as one family together, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
I spoke at Renux Baptism about the journey towards First Communion. And we together, we have made this Holy Communion, we've, we've prayed the Lord Jesus into our hearts. Let us thank the Lord for the gift of this Holy Eucharist which sustains us in the grief and confusion that the disciples knew only too well themselves. the vulnerability that St. Paul knew. But above all, the love and mercy of God, which each one of them was deeply aware of. Lord Jesus, continue to strengthen us with this holy food from heaven so that we may be happy with you in this life and supremely happy to the next. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In this chapel of the Defence Forces, this Church of the Defence Forces, there is a poem that is very relevant for today. So somebody has been volunteered to read it. Colette has this text that, that sums up so many of the values that we need in our Defence Forces and in our society. Soldier's poem. There is a discipline in a soldier. You can see it when they walk. There is honor in a soldier. You hear it when they talk. There is courage in a soldier. You can see it in their eyes. There is loyalty in a soldier that they will not compromise. There is something in a soldier that makes them stand apart. There is strength in a soldier that beats from his heart. A soldier isn't a title anybody can be hired to do. A soldier is the soul of a man buried deep inside of you. A soldier's job isn't finished after an eight-hour day or a 40-hour week. A soldier is always a soldier, even when he sleeps. A soldier serves their country first and their life is left behind. A soldier has to sacrifice what comes first in a civilian's mind. If you are a civilian, I'm saying to you, next time you see a soldier, remember what they do. A soldier is the reason our land is home of the free. A soldier is, is the one that is brave protecting you and me. If you are a soldier, I am saying this to you. Thank God for every soldier. Thank God for what you do.
And if you are a civilian, or if you're a veteran, and this, I hope this isn't your first time here in Arbor Hill Church, but if it is, just, just raise your hand for me, would you please? If your first time here. Now, Ronnie, Richard, and you can tell Martin that we had a huge amount of new visitors who came to this church to do what the church was built for, to pray around a soldier and to pray him into heaven. Around you are flags hanging up of different units, different battalions who've served overseas. And Martin would have administered some of these units in preparing to go overseas. You notice that the altar is in the shape of a gun carriage. You can spot the top half of the wheel there, as it were, rising up out of the carpet. And Martin would have made sure that for funerals in the battalion that soldiers were given the best of attention and kindness as he did in life, as in death too. We have remembered the life, the death and resurrection of Jesus at this Mass. And it's with that confidence that we entrust Martin to God's mercy. But for those of you who are here for your first time, I will invite you, before you were in no rush, we have to be in Navan for two o'clock, isn't that right? Do please have a little visit to the cedar room on the left-hand side as you leave. A little room of reflection, of prayer for soldiers who died in Lebanon. Soldiers who gave a hug to their family and planned to be back within six months. And instead, their family were given a hug by friends, by the chaplain, by those who were at home and who had to help and sustain them in their time of loss. Do make a little visit there and just see how soldiers remember that people are more than just a number. I want to thank Susan and all involved in making sure that our, our music and our prayers were so prayerful and that they will sustain us as we make our way back down to Navan now as we entrust Martin to the love and mercy of God, I invite you to stand, please. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Martin. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. With holy water now, we honour Martin's remains. And with the frankincense, we remind ourselves of the dignity of each human life.
receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Together. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest, grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Martin in the sure and certain hope that together with all who died in Christ, he will rise with him in new life. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed on Martin in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and assist us with your help so that the prayers that we've offered today may benefit the soul of your servant Martin, and that one day we will have a joyful reunion with him in that kingdom of light and peace, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Now in peace, let us prepare to take Martin on his final journey. May the angels lead him into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome him and take him to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome him and lead him to the bosom of Abraham. For Lazarus is poor no longer, may he find eternal peace. sings my soul my soul 
Rest in 